Hey folks, so camping season, for those of you that aren't full-time, is right around the corner if you haven't already kicked it into high gear. So we want to talk about things that are going to make everyone's camping experience more enjoyable. Stay tuned. Hey folks, welcome back to the Happy Place Diaries. That is Teresa. That's Jerry. And um, we just want to say thanks for coming back and watching our little channel here on the YouTube. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We're so happy to have you. If you're returning, well, you know how much we appreciate you and we love you so much. We love you so much that... that that's creepy. <laughs> Anyway, hey, thanks for coming back. So let's jump right in. Shall we? We shall, because we are talking a little bit about etiquette. That's right. Camping. Campground etiquette. etiquette. And again, this isn't about tenters. This isn't about pop-ups. This isn't about travel trailers or, you know, coaches. This is about making everyone's experience more enjoyable yeah. when you're out at the campground. Having fun. So Jerry, what's your what's your worst etiquette M thing? Number one is noise. We leave the city to come out here in the woods or out in the country or out in the whatever to get away from all of that. And so, you know, when we're laying in bed, the last thing we want to hear is compartment slamming. Door slamming. Um, music too loud. I, I mean, the RV industry installed speakers on everybody's outside of their trailers nowadays. And that's fine. We're not get off our lawn type of folks. But when it's quiet time, it's quiet time. And so... You have to be aware of your surroundings. Yeah, and if you want to listen to music, um, that's fine. And we turn up your music as loud as you want to, as long as it's George Strait. We don't mind. And once it's past 10 o'clock, turn it down. That's right. And if you don't know if it's too loud, walk out into the street and the, see if you can hear it. Yeah, if it's too loud for your neighbor, then it's too loud. Same um, with talking. Yeah, and you know, so party time. So the folks that are like six sites away from us that way decided to have a little bit of a gathering last night. We're totally fine with that. At 10 o'clock, it was quiet. And that's awesome. That's, that's what, the way it should be. Right. Uh, cars and trucks. And <laughs> this kind of is directed a little bit more at uh, at least with the car thing, with the tenters. Um, you know, they're in their doors. Doo, 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 doo. Every every five seconds, it seems like they're opening a door. And I get it. They got nowhere else to store stuff. Yeah, but if they have it in a container, just bring the container out. Yeah. and Because most of them are waterproof, so you can just set it aside yeah. and open it later. And for those of you that are seasonal uh, and you got to go to work in the morning... That's fine, but don't let your truck idle in front of my bedroom for 25 minutes. Especially when you've got a big old diesel truck. Yeah. And, and again, it's it's about being aware of your surroundings. You know, just don't be that guy um, that isn't aware of what's going on around them. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right. Because I guarantee we can beat that horse to death. <laughs> um, lights. So yeah. a lot of us have lights on the outside of our trailers. Now sometimes you might want to remember to turn off your porch light because your neighbor it might be shining right into their bedroom or you know they're they've got their blinds closed but it's still coming through. Yeah it's nice to see that the industry has started putting the porch lights on the end of the awning and that way when your awning's out the porch light is shining back towards your rig like ours they're on the wall and so if we have our awning in it's lighting up everything on the passenger side 
I mean, out to like two, three campsites away. So, yeah, be very aware of that. Yes? Yes. Also, the um, you can get the little lights that go underneath your stair that illuminate all over so you don't have to have your... Right. Um, and we did, we installed light. stairs on our back, uh, lights on our back stairs so that we don't need to turn the porch light on when we have to take the dogs out at night to do, you know, the, the pee walk. Uh, so, you know, um, just be aware, again, awareness of your lighting situation. If you've got those big cap lights, just remember that they're, yeah, they're really nice to look at, but they're shining at somebody uh, when you've got them on. So just be aware that there's a reasonable time to turn them off. And if you're one of those folks that likes to light up your entire campsite, like uh, aircraft should be taxiing through at any given time, just be aware that sometimes that could take away from the camping ambiance also. All right, how about MySpace? And I'm not talking about <laughs> the old Facebook, <laughs> the old Facebook type of site. Um, MySpace has this little bubble around our campsite. And so that means don't walk through it unless you're invited to walk through it. Um, don't start encroaching. We were at a campground up in Washington where terrible layout, but the guy next to us actually had his poopos under our picnic table. Right. Well, that's because that's how close we were. Right. Now, we moved the picnic table. Right. Obviously. But when you're in situations like that, at least communicate with your neighbor that you're going to go out and dump. You know, don't do it while we're sitting out there having dinner. And remind if you have guests, remind them or your grandkids or there's other kids around not to run through people's campsites. Um, it's... Yeah. We've had it done uh, quite a few times and we had one kid sitting on our bumper and it's like, really? Yeah. You're really going to sit on our bumper? Come on. And yeah. the parents were like 20 feet away. Yeah, with all their lights on playing loud music. So <laughs> just, just understand that everybody is given a bubble and that's your bubble. And nobody should be violating your little camp bubble. Okay, here's the... Here's the big taboo subject, and that's pets and kids. Keep them both on a leash. <laughs> I'm kidding on the pets thing. No, again, if you have kids, that's great. We've got, we had, you know, our kids are all grown and gone now. But just understand that your kids belong to you. Um, and so they should stay inside of your space if they're out riding their scooter that's fine or the bikes that's fine keep it out on the road and whatnot and you need to teach your kids also about quiet time right and i and i get it there is the baby exemption babies you can't control it so god bless you um we did it too pets keep them on a leash if you don't have them on a leash you know keep them in a pen of some sort um, but just understand that what you think, or if you think your pet is friendly, uh, the other pets might not be. Right. Or the other kids might not be, or the other people might not be. So just kind of keep control over that. And the last thing I'll talk about with pets is bag up their poop. Nobody needs leftover poop laying around. Uh, when we got to our campsite on Thursday, there was a big pile yeah. that they left. And, I, you know, it wasn't that they couldn't pick it up. They just didn't. They chose not to. So, you know, I mean... Pick it up. Yeah, there's no need to be an asshole about it. Just pick up your pet's poop. And if you don't have a bag, wrap it up in toilet paper or whatever. Or I mean, scoop it up and put it in the woods. Yeah. You know, just... Yeah. And speaking of putting it in a bag... Our next and last one is about garbage and trash. Yeah. So understand that we are out in kind of a wilder area. A wilderness, yeah. And if you leave your trash bag outside, the animals are going to get into it. Um, Even if you have garbage pickup, you... Yeah. 
wait until right before or make sure that you double bag or whatever uh, because birds and raccoons and we've seen it several times yeah i mean just yesterday just leaving a garbage bag out and it could be that they forgot it but you got to be careful because those rodents and birds they get into everything quick yeah and then it just makes a huge mess especially since most campgrounds have really adequate uh garbage service or dumpsters or whatever just you know throw it in the back of your truck if you have to take it out yeah and you don't want to take it to the dumpster at least make sure you know where the dumpsters are sometimes yeah. they're hard to find but find it and you know just yeah and the other part of trash out. is don't make your campground look trashy you know um as we're walking around enjoying being out here we want to see nice things. If I if I wanted to see trashy yards, I'd just go to Portland. So, you know, we we come to get away from that. Right. So if you if you generate a lot of trash, pick it up. You know, have trash bins or containers or bags or ways not to make your campsite look like a yard sale. And if you have kids, like we used to have our kids line up and we'd walk through the campground and we'd pick up bottle caps or, you yeah. know, just wrappers of some sort so that we left it better than we found it. Right. So. So those are five things that we think are important in making sure that everybody has a wonderful camping experience, whether you're in a pop-up trailer or a tent or a million dollar coach um everybody deserves to have a wonderful experience and if you do these five things or you're aware of those five things the experience is going to be good for all of us right. hey share the video with a friend hit that like button we really appreciate it and um we'll see you next time yeah we'll see you next time thanks for coming along